Welcome to lesson one of the Chart of the Ages. My name is Todd, and I'm with Bible Students Fellowship. Over the next 10 sessions, we will learn the scriptures which detail the plan of God from the beginning of Adam's creation to as far into the future that we can look according to the scriptures, and that is called the ages to come. We will learn about the different relationships that mankind has with God, their time periods, the unique opportunities for service before God, and we will look only to the scriptures as our guide. In the Chart of the Ages sessions, we will learn about the different ages, or sometimes we call them dispensations of the plan of God. We will also learn about different levels that mankind has in their relationship with God, which change depending upon the age and the opportunity. And then finally, we will learn about the different objects on the chart of the ages. These different objects, the shape is, of the object is not as important as the scripture which describes this people or group that has a unique opportunity before God. So let's get into the first lesson, which is really going to be simply about the ages or dispensations of mankind. In the plan of God, we would like to first begin with the world that was. This is an age that began with the creation of Adam and ends in the destruction of that world in the flood. Now, the scriptures that we like to use for this age, we find in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 6, where the apostle Peter says, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Do you see that? He talks about a world that perished. Now we're still living on the earth. So this cannot be speaking about the earth perishing. It's speaking about the age and it's describing that age as a world, which means it has a unique set of circumstances which guided it and which ruled it. But here we find the name that we use on the chart, the world that was. Now we also have a scripture in Genesis chapter 6, which describes the society at the time of this age. Listen to what these words say. Genesis chapter 6 verses 11 through 13. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? The society was destroyed. The physical planet Earth was not destroyed. And I think that's an important concept that we'd like to carry over into future lessons. Now let's take a look at the second major dispensation or age, as we call it, on the chart of the ages. That's the present evil world. That is the age that began with the flood of Noah and ends in a time just before us with the completion of the church and the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. The scripture we'd like to share with you is the Apostle Paul's words in Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, where he says, who gave himself for our sins, he's speaking of Jesus, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Do you see? That is where we get the title for the present evil world. Another scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Do you see how it describes the world as being wicked? That's the present evil world. Another scripture. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. I think this is an interesting scripture which describes the society 
that will be prevalent during the world, the present evil world. It is a time where the proud are happy. It is a time when the people that do wickedness are actually promoted. And it is a time when those who tempt God are not held into account by God. They are actually delivered. Why? Why is all the injustice pervasive? It's because it is an evil world. The Apostle Paul calls it the present evil world. Now let's take it to take a look at the third major dispensation. That's the world to come. And that is the world that is just before us in its full establishment. It is the world of God's kingdom. It is the establishment of God's kingdom on earth with all of the blessings that have been promised ever since Father Abraham. And it is the last of the three major ages that we will consider. Let's look to the Apostle Paul's words in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Do you see that world to come was a subject of the Apostle Paul's ministry? It was a focus of his ministry. And he's saying here that the angels are not going to be put in charge of the world to come. The reason why that's significant is because God did put the angels in charge of the world that was. That's the first dispensation. But the Apostle Paul speaks of a future time in which the angels would not have any rule. 2 Peter 3.13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. This is the blessing of God's kingdom on earth. This is the opportunity to have a new heavens or ecclesiastical ruling power and a new earth. And that is a ruling power that would be follow the principles of God on earth. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10 is another beautiful scripture which describes this dispensation. The Apostle Paul tells us that in the dispensations of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Now, if you're a Bible student, you might remember the Abrahamic promise. And that is a beautiful promise that God made to Abraham based upon his faith that projected a beautiful time far into the future, where all of mankind would realize the blessings that God would give them. And this is the time that is, that is described by the Apostle Paul. It is a time when Christ will bring together all things which are in heaven and which are on earth. It's a time that will be at the fullness of times, which means that it is a subject of a, of a focal point in Bible prophecy. We will take a look at that in more detail later. For now, let's go back in history and let's look at some of the smaller ages. These are ages within ages. We have the patriarchal age, which we will discuss first. Afterward, we will discuss the Jewish age, then the gospel age, and the messianic age. And you can see that these are unique time periods smaller sections of time be underneath the three major ages or dispensations. So let's take a look at the patriarchal age. Here we have a beautiful testimony of uh, Stephen, the disciple Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, verse 8. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circ circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs. Now, this was Stephen's testimony right before he was stoned. And he was testifying to his audience about the plan of God. And he was detailing the plan of God in a beautiful speech. And here he details the patriarchal age. It covers the time of the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then it ends with the death of Jacob, in which time God would start working with Jacob's 
12 sons, which would, as you know, become the 12 tribes of Israel. The Jewish age was a unique time because it represented the opportunity for God to work only with the Jews. We find this in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, where God speaks this to the nation of Israel. And he says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So you see, that is why this is called the Jewish age, because the Jews had a very special relationship with God. Beginning with Abraham, their, their father, through the Abrahamic promise, but continuing through Isaac and Jacob, and then, of course, the 12 sons of Jacob, the tribes of Israel. Another scripture by the prophet David in Psalm 147, verses 19 through 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Do you see that special relationship that God had with the Jews? David says in this scripture that he shows his word to Jacob, and that means Israel, and his statutes and his judgments. That means that God had an individual relationship with the people of Israel as a nation. Now let's take a look at the gospel age. The gospel age is a very powerful time. It represents the time period when Jesus began his ministry all the way to the end of the time when the church would be complete, when the door of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus would be closed. And it is a wonderful time. It's a time where Christians are given the opportunity to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ in a life of sacrifice that's counterintuitive to the world. Let's take a look at a couple of scriptures. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. My friends, this is the gospel age. It's the time when Jesus began his ministry. It's the time when he had the opportunity to live a life of self-sacrifice for 1260 days and culminate that sacrifice in his crucifixion. It was the opportunity to begin the call of the church, which we are still enjoying today. And it is the time of the good news of the kingdom. During Jesus's first advent, he was doing the work of God's kingdom on earth, simply to show his authenticity as the Messiah and to open up the eyes of the blind and to open up the ears of those who could not understand. And this is the opportunity that we have to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. It is an opportunity for good news, and it is the characterization of the gospel age. Here's another scripture that characterizes the gospel age. It's in Acts chapter 15, verse 14. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Do you see how the gospel age is characterized as a time for God to now visit the Gentiles? The opportunity to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ is open to all mankind, not only Gentiles, but also to believing Jews. And this is the opportunity that we have today. And it is a time that is fast approaching the end. Another scripture. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's the end of the gospel age. That's the end of the present evil world. 
I think that is just before us today. Has the gospel been preached into all nations? Yeah, absolutely it has. It hasn't been heard by all peoples, but it's been preached into all nations. And this is the opportunity for this beautiful chart of the ages to have a powerful effect upon our hearts because it shows the manifold wisdom and power of God to bless all families of the earth. Now let's take a look at the Messianic age. This is the first age in the world to come. And this is the opportunity that all mankind has hoped for. It's the opportunity for the blessings of God's kingdom on earth. It's the opportunity that Jesus preached about, all of the apostles preached about, and it is the opportunity for us to preach about God's kingdom on earth. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25. This is an interesting scripture. It says, the apostle Paul says, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Well, my friends, that opportunity for Jesus Christ to reign in power from heaven is going to be during the Messianic age. The opportunity for the Messianic work to commence and to spread throughout the entire world through the power that Jesus received from God himself. Another beautiful scripture that describes this age in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. Now that was Jesus, that's Jesus, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. My friends, the Messianic age is the time when Jesus will rule the earth, but he will also have his bride with him reigning from heaven. Those are the called out ones. Those are the ones who were faithful and following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ during the gospel age. These are the ones that were raised from the dead in a moment, in a twinkling of, you, of an eye, during the last part of the gospel age. This is the church that will reign with Jesus in heaven during this thousand-year kingdom of God that will bless all of the families of the earth. It's in time that will witness the resurrection of the dead of the billions of mankind with the opportunity to follow God in God's righteous kingdom under the rule of Jesus Christ and his church. There is one scripture that talks about the ages to come, and that is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. The Apostle Paul refers to this as something that would happen after the Messianic age. He says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. So you see, that's where we get the title, the ages to come. It's going to happen at the end of the Messianic age. Here's another beautiful scripture by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. What a comforting thought it is for us to understand that the plan of God is something that will 
include forever. It's the opportunity to follow God and to live as perfect human beings for most of the world of mankind forever. Now let's take a look at the harvest at the end of the Jewish age. The harvest at the end of the Jewish age, that was the opportunity for those believing Jews to be gathered up together into um, the loving arms of Jesus and the opportunity to accept Jesus as their brother. Let's see what it says in Luke chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. John answered, saying unto them all, I need, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Did you see that separating work that would happen during the harvest? where the true believers would be the wheat that would be gathered into his barn and the uh, the um, nominal house of Israel would be considered chaff that would be destroyed in the, in the coming destruction of the Jewish system uh, in about 70 AD. Do you see that? That is a unique opportunity that John the Baptist was preaching about, about Jesus Christ, and how Jesus would be the next opportunity for the Jews to take the next step and then be a part of that harvest, be that wheat that would be gathered into the garner. Let's take a look at the harvest of the gospel age. We talked about the harvest of the Jewish age for the Jews. Let's take a look at the harvest of the gospel age this is the harvest work of doing the separating work of the wheat from the tares. Whereas the work of the harvest of the Jewish age was the wheat from the chaff, the harvest of the gospel age is the wheat from the tares. Now let's take a look. Matthew 13, verse 30 and 38 through 40. And see if you can see the separating work that is happening here. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, this is the parable of the wheat and the tares. And the tares were the seeds of weeds that were planted by the adversary among the church. But the wheat is the true wheat of the gospel age church that would be gathered into God's barn. Let's continue. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Do, do you see the separating work that is happening? Do you see the separating work that is doing the work be, of separating the weeds from the true wheat? That separating work is the truth. That's the gospel. That's the truth of the gospel of, of God's kingdom. And that's what we are trying to do today. So this work characterizes the harvest at the end of the gospel age. And Revelation 14, verses 15 and 18, And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Now, that angel is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that is guiding the work of the harvest. He is the one that is guiding the separating work that is happening between the wheat and the tares. And another angel came out from the altar, which had the power over fire and cried with a, and, 
and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, and for her grapes are fully ripe. Now, this is talking about the bad seed. This is talking about the tares that were planted, and they turned out to be weeds. And in this scripture, the metaphor is used as grapes or a vine. And this has to do with the false church that is being dealt with by God at the same time that his faithful ones are being brought into the kingdom of heaven. The false church. Now, I'm not talking about people. It only talks about systems. So those systems will be destroyed, even though the people will be saved. That's an important point. So you see this time of the harvest at the end of the gospel age is a separating work. It's the opportunity for the church to be delivered, for the false church to be destroyed, and for God's kingdom to progress. Now, we've talked a lot about different things on the chart of the ages. Then we will continue our lesson in lesson two. And we wish you God's blessing as you consider the scriptures that are before you. See you soon.